every day is a day to celebrate. Almost every day is a national something or other day. And we but, need to look forward to these days in these dark times of Enzo Amore's Cruiserweight Championship reign. And no day is more important than Rusev Day. Ladies and gentlemen, happy Rusev Day and welcome to Tuesday Night Live. Well, it made me tear up a little bit, actually. Well, you know, that's... In Rusev we trust. We'll save Rusev for a little bit later. Uh, yeah, SmackDown. We uh, had some more build up towards Hell in a Cell as we are just about a week and a half away from said oh, show. Holy moly. Uh, we had Baron Corbin versus Ty Dillinger. We had AJ Styles at a ringside. Uh, this was a pretty, you know, a pretty simple match which uh, Baron Corbin ended up getting kind of a cheap win as he used a, uh, a distraction tactic. He tossed some water in the face of AJ Styles. That caused Ty Dillinger to come back out. He actually shoved Ty Dillinger into AJ Styles. They went tumbling over the announce table. And Baron Corbin won by count out. Uh, and uh, proud of his handiwork, uh, he decided to mouth off against AJ Styles and challenge him to a U.S. title match for Hell in a Cell, which has officially been set. Oh, <sighs> Corbin... Still don't like you. We had uh, the newest edition of the Jinder Mahal Comedy Hour, as he he and the Singh brothers made fun of different faces of Shinsuke Nakamura. They were slightly surprised when one of said pictures started to move, and then talked horribly through a Japanese accent with a mouth guard in, Shinsuke, you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, for real. But at which point Shinsuke Nakamura made his presence known, came down to the ring, and beat the shit out of all three of them. Yeah. And that was fun. So Shinsuke gets a little bit of revenge after the weeks of the awful racism. Segments. You, yeah. The guy who complains about racism. You was all being look racist. the same to me. That that was that, that is a Jinder Mahal quote. Well, the Hype Bros last week decided they needed to do something drastic. They needed something to change their losing ways. And so, so losing to the Usos is going to do that. Well, yeah. They decided to challenge. They couldn't beat the tag team champions. So they're like, who's the next most dominant team on the roster? Yeah, it's like, oh, we couldn't beat the tag team champions? Let's try and fight the last tag team champions. <laughs> yeah. So they, no, the tag team champions... The last tag team champions who won their champions by beating the current champions. Yeah. Uh, but like we said, uh, it was a failing attempt by the Hype Bros. It, because it, it, it's, it's Mojo. It was, yeah. Mojo logic. Or the lack thereof. Like, you should be like, okay, well... Brock Lesnar beat Braun Strowman, so let me go try to fight Braun Strowman. Yeah, like, Dean. Uh, no, I was... Don't, don't compare Dean to Mojo Logic. Well. That was different. Mo Mojo had this brilliant idea that, oh, I got my ass kicked the whole match. And now Zach is doing real, real good. So I'm going to tag myself in instead of letting Zach continue to kick ass. And Zach's like, dude, Why? And then Mojo got shoved into Zack. Zack fell out to the outside. Mojo ended up getting a super kick and a super fly splash. And the Usos defeated the Hype Bros. As they should. Then shit got real because at ringside, eating popcorn like they usually do when their opponents are in tag team matches, the New Day were hanging out. Yeah, they were actually in the crowd. Yeah. And Big E just happened to have a microphone in his popcorn bucket. Yeah. Uh, inside the popcorn. Um, the butteriest microphone. They all, you in know, WWE history. They all said their their little bits and pieces. Uh, you got the crowd to interact a little bit, and then Xavier Woods dropped the bomb, saying they don't just want to defend their tag team titles at Hell in a Cell. They want to defend them inside Hell in a Cell. Yeah. 
we are going to get the New Day versus the Usos inside Hell in a Cell. He's doing the Braun Strowman lip lick thing. That's when you know he's excited. Oh, that's this one. <laughs> uh, Braun goes up. <laughs> he does. Okay. Next week, the Fashion Files return. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real. Going back on the Usos' okay. new day at Hell in a Cell. Fucking stoked. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is the first tag team Hell in a Cell we've had this decade. Yeah. La um, yeah last one was like 2007, and that was the McMahons and Big Show versus DX. And, uh, you know, it's one of those moments where it's like, this pay-per-view came at such a good time because we're literally peeking out that, like, Usos versus New Day can't get any better than it's been. Yeah. So now let's add on a new thing that they haven't done yet that has a, such a big margin to make it so much cooler... Just kind of like right when you're ready, right and right at the point where the, the feud could be ready to fizzle out. They're li they're literally going to use the Hell in a Cell for what it was created for, to end a feud. Unless the Usos win, and then things might go wrong. But I'm pretty sure the New Day's gonna win. But regardless, again, New Day. I just want to. I just want you to reflect on the street fight. Yeah. That you guys had, where you opted to. Not that use the third person. Hell in a cell, same scenario, no disqualifications. Lock all three of you guys in there. Mm -hmm. And it should be a cakewalk. That'd be awesome. Like I said, next week the Fashion Files return. Looking forward to that. Uh, we had Charlotte take on Carmella. Uh, a yeah, a failed attempt for Miss Money in the Bank, Charlotte picking up the win, and then Natty saying she's looking forward to Hell in a Cell. She's glad Ric Flair is healthy and can watch Hell in a Cell and watch his daughter fail. Eh. Woo! Then it was Rusev Day. We had what a Aiden, day. We had Aiden English singing the Bulgarian National Anthem. This, this might, I mean, not, not to skip forward, but this might have been... One of the most successful wrestling celebrations of like the last five years. It you know it almost went off without a hitch. Almost so it, close. It was you know yeah there were so many good things that happened. Yeah, Aiden English singing. You had, uh, the the representative from Bulgaria reading. The mayor from, of Rusev's hometown. Reading from a fucking scroll. The Aiden English was holding. Uh, and presenting the key. To the city in Bulgaria that he's from, to Rusev. Rusev having oh, a yeah, Rusev having a fantastic day. He's the conquering hero. He got to stand on a giant podium. He reflected on his uh, his amazing win over Randy Orton. He's now the lion of Bulgaria. Yeah, and the Viper. Which is weird because Bulgaria doesn't have lions. Are you sure? Lions are almost one hundred percent native to Africa. You might. Want to fact check that? You don't know. You've never been to Bulgaria. I mean, the, you they, said they, almost one hundred percent. They they might have a zoo. That means there is a lion in Bulgaria. Maybe. But now that that's Rusev. that lion has been shipped off, and Rusev is the lion of Bulgaria. But the viper is no longer the apex predator. It is now Rusev's jungle. Until Aiden English starts singing again, and then out of nowhere, RKO. Because it's not a celebration without something going wrong. And then Rusev tried to attack him, and ah, RKO! He fucking took that RVD bump again. Which he does fairly well. Yeah. Uh, only one who didn't get RKO'd was the mayor. Which is probably a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> you I don't were looking know. forward to it. I, I said he should have been the only one that got RKO'd. And then Randy Orton later on told Renee Young, Hey, when Rusev wakes up, let him know if he wants me in the ring, he can meet me at hell. And happy, happy Rusev, Rusev Day. Day. Uh, and then, The Undertaker. The gong hit. The lightning struck. And Dolph Ziggler makes a horrible Undertaker. He's too small. 
He thought he was funny. Crowd didn't like it too much. No. Neither did Bobby Roode. So, so, uh, uh, to be completely honest, though, this is the first time that Ziggler's entrance shtick actually kind of got a reaction from the crowd. The, the difference this time is he didn't come out first. Yeah. It, I guarantee you, if, like, one week he had done Shawn Michaels, another week he had done, like, Daniel Bryan, and then this week he had done The Undertaker people would have reacted more to the Dolph Ziggler segments. Yeah. This actually got a You Suck chant. Uh, Which is weird, because he wasn't trying to be Kurt Angle. Hmm. That's an interesting observation. Uh, but yeah, Bobby Roode uh, came out and said, well, you know, Dolph, you, you say you don't care what they think about you, but you seem to come out here and talk about that quite often. And Ziggler's like, oh, look, it's the elaborate entrance and the giant robe and the lack of in-ring talent. And then Bobby Roode's like, bitch, meet me at Hell in a Cell. Dolph's like, all right, bitch, I'll meet you. And Bobby Roode said it's going to be glorious. After, Hi, I'm Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> after he stopped Dolph Ziggler from saying, whoever meets me in the ring rests in peace. And I'm glad he stopped him for that. But our overarching storyline, which opened and closed the show, was Kevin Owens still not giving a fuck about Shane McMahon. Kevin Owens straight up honey badgering. Yeah, he... Boy, yeah, he has hit a different level of uh, healness. For yeah. real. I mean, he... He is, he is so laser-focused on just being a destructive piece of shit. So he comes out and he starts running his mouth about Shane and Vince and how he actually kind of likes and respects Vince McMahon. But, uh, you know, what he did was on Shane's hands. Yeah. Uh, then Sami Zayn came out and said, bro, <laughs> you have fucking flipped. You have crossed a line and you need to chill the fuck out. You go straight off the deep end. Yeah. And, Owen, and Owens is like... So, I'm and, better than you. Yeah, and then for some reason this became like a, oh, I'm better than you speech. Well, that uh, really always happens with Kevin Owens. Yeah, but still, I mean, the, this to me kind of like swerved in the wrong direction because I think they should have kept hammering away at the Kevin Owens douche nozzly yeah. being angry. Uh, oh well, can't change the past. It's already happened. Moving forward, uh, they're about to come to blows when Daniel Bryan comes out and says, Hey, you guys, don't fight, because you guys have a match. Later. Later. So don't fight now. Fight later. I'm just glad that we actually got a, a legit reason why they needed to fight each other. And this is, the, this is like the first one-on-one -on -one match they've had on SmackDown, which thank you for holding off a little while. But that was indeed our main event. The whole the whole thing throughout the night was whether or not Shane McMahon was going to show up. Uh, Daniel Bryan did get a call from Shane saying that he was on his way. And Sammy tried to tell him, like, hey, don't let Shane get involved in the match. It's it's not necessary. You know, let me and Kevin deal with this. Let us, let, uh, let us just fight it out in the ring and we'll see what happens. Uh, and they did. They had a hell of a match because it's... Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens, it's always fucking good. Yeah, and then the part where Sami Zayn went awry, because his whole plan was, hey, he said, let's fight it out in the ring. Uh, mm -hmm. They started fighting on the outside, and yeah. that's where things got a little shifty. Yeah, things don't go well out there. Yeah, I mean, he tried for that torpedo DDT, Kevin Owens kicked him right in the turnbuckle. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I see what you said there. Uh, and gave him the apron power bomb. Yeah, that's that that which, has I mean, been that's been used to, to write Sami Zayn off TV twice now. Yeah, uh, let's see if it goes been three two, to three. It's been two straight years of just nothing but that. Anyway, uh, so the match gets called off because yeah, it's re referee stoppage. I assume Sam, Sam, the referee's like, bro, <laughs> this dude. It's dying. He is. <laughs> End the match. 
I wish Lil Nate said it exactly that way. And that would have been fantastic. Kevin Owens was like, I want to sit on the commentary table. So he scoots the slanted top yeah. back. <laughs> just and <laughs> so he has a little edge to sit on. Just makes room for his ass. And he just kind of sits there and he stares at the whole scenario while the trainers and medics come out to help Sammy. Uh, then he attacks them from behind as they're about to leave. Gets ready to sandwich a chair between Sammy's face and a ring post. Is what I'm good, old, good old Colombian necktie. And uh, here's where Shane McMahon's music hits. Yeah, and Shane stands at one end and the camera swings over and Kevin Owens says, Bring it on, motherfucker! <laughs> and Shane did. Shane brought it on and then he got hit in the face with the chair that was on Sammy's face. Yeah. Uh, it was a chair sandwich with face bread. Yeah, he started sprinting down the way, and Owens was like, I'm going to meet you. And instead of meeting him, he threw Sammy in the way. So Shane ate one of like the chair legs. Yeah, it poked him right in the fucking face. Yeah, it got him in the mouth. I'm pretty sure he deep-throated a chair and leg. And then Kevin Owens ran like a little bitch. He hopped the barricade <laughs> and went up the shield entrance. He was fucking out of there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and Shane's just like, Shane's just telling him to come back. Like, I'm not done with you, so... Either next week SmackDown is going to get real ugly, or we're just going to save all the ugliness for Hell in a Cell. Both. Alright, cool. That is it for SmackDown. Move on to 205 Live. Uh, talk about a couple things in between. First, Lindsay can't catch a fucking break. Nope. Still. He was supposed to have a match against TJP, and Rip Swan said, Bitch, get out of my way! And then they fought. Rich and TJ. Yeah. Lindsay just fucking disappeared. Uh, well, you know, it's we're, we're seeing a lot of good Lindsay magic tricks. Yeah. He can get beat up by invisible people. And he can disappear. And he can't make it into 2K18. Sad day. Uh, we uh, have, you're sad about Lindsay. I'm sad because there's no Drew Gulak. No. Speaking of Drew Gulak, he was at a ringside to watch his, his buddy, his bro, his... His boo thing, Tony Nese, take on Akira Tozawa. And the thing, like, out of all the 205 Live guys, the two most generic wrestler guys, Tony Nese and Drew Gulak, didn't make the game. They would have been, like, the easiest character models yeah. to come up with. You just make up buff. Trunks and boots. Yeah, skin, one skinny dude, one really buff dude. Yeah. And it's, they, they literally have both of those body types in the game. Um... But yeah, he was at ringside uh, watching Akira Tozawa versus Tony Nese. Akira Tozawa winning with the top rope senton, a fantastic match. And then Drew Gulak decided to show us slide number seven of the Drew Gulak PowerPoint, which is no celebrating. I'm pretty sure Drew Gulak celebrates when he wins. We wouldn't know. Drew Gulak doesn't win. Good point um this just turned into tozawa and the fans just trolling drew gulak the whole time yeah and then eventually drew gulak getting kicked in the face and then akira tozawa celebrating more come on guys let's let drew finish that powerpoint please only 270 more slides to go yeah for real uh maybe we'll fit it maybe we'll see another one next week yeah, the, you know, the best ones are right around 160. Yeah, only, only 153 more weeks before we get there. But next week we will have Cedric Alexander versus Gentleman Jack the Ripper. We had some ominous words from uh, from Jack and Brian Kendrick. Yeah. Uh, a lot of talk about winter and the changing of seasons and stuff on this episode of 205 Live. Uh, we'll talk about the other one in a second. But yeah, that should be a fun match next week. Uh, I'll, I'll be inter I'll, I'll be very interested to see Jack Gallagher run a whole match heel. Yeah, that'll be fun to watch. But our overarching storyline here, of course, revolves around our least favorite person on the roster, Enzo. Fucking douchebag, weasel face, twat waffle, Amore. Uh, who essentially came out and bitched about the uh, the attack from Neville. And then the post-Raw attack from both Braun Strowman and the entire Cruiserweight division. Which was my favorite thing I've seen in a long time. It was fantastic. 
Uh, to which he essentially said what I what I was thinking after we watched it is that he doesn't have to defend the title now. Yeah. Because he had a no contact clause and the entire division attacked him. Uh, I yeah, don't. So therefore, Brian Kendrick, Jack Gallagher, Tony Nice, Drew Gulak, Cedric Alexander, Mustafa Ali, TJP, uh, Rich Swan. Did, did I say Tony Nese already? Yeah, yeah. Tony Nese. Arya Davari. Uh, Arya Davari. Uh, Noam Dar. Lindsay Arado. Lindsay Arado. Graham Metalik. Uh, and Braun Strowman are all now unable to challenge him for the Cruiserweight Championship. But Arya Davari decided to try and suck up. On 205 Live and say, you know what? I was I was pressured into being out there. I didn't really want to do that. That was all Neville. I just I I was just, sure I, I just was. you know I, I I respect you. I mean you're Enzo Amore. You're. It was kind of sad. It makes me nauseous. It it was really gross watching Davari, who had was part of this awesome moment and then just ruined it. Yeah, for real. Just fucking ruined it. Yeah, man. Your brother is ashamed of you now. Tell him, Sean. Um. Well, Ari Navar is like, hey, I want to, I, I want to show you just how much I appreciate you, how much, how much I respect you. I want you to watch me beat Neville in the main event. Yeah, he's like, come, to, come to ringside. Be out there when I uh, beat him up, and Enzo's like, "I'll be in your corner." He says, "Ah, uh, yeah, that's one better than actually just being out there is being in his corner." Man, you're gonna taint the corner. No one's ever gonna want to stand in that corner ever again. He was on a whole side of the ring, but before that, we got the glory of the king letting us know that. He understands that he forfeited his Cruiserweight title rematch, but given the opportunity, he would do it again, and again, and again. And I'd watch it every time. Because Neville is a gracious king. Mm -hmm. And then we watched him beat the hell out of Devar. Actually, we watched Devar beat the hell out of Neville. Yeah. Why in the middle of the match? Because as soon as the bell rang, the first thing Neville did was... Go uh, after Enzo. Go after Enzo, and Navarro was just able to uh, take advantage of the multiple times that Enzo distracted Neville. Ne yeah, Neville was extremely focused on Enzo on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Man, that was the other thing that like shocked me too. Is just how fast Neville can get out of the oh, ring. Yeah. He is. He is he a was, quick little fucker. He was just like, and I think it like. It doubled up because on me because he's like he walked so slow to the ring during his entrance. Yeah, and then as soon as the bell rang, he like I'm pretty sure he phased through the ropes. Yeah, it, it takes him half a second to get out of the ring. Yeah, he phased through the ropes. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's pretty awesome. And was like right up in Enzo's face. Yeah, uh, yeah, and Davari took uh, took quick advantage of that. Beat him up for most of the match. Uh, Neville got a few moments here and there. Dory missed the frog splash. Yeah. Uh, and then he he took advantage of another distraction from Enzo and tried to go for his uh, his hammerlock lariat, but Neville was able to duck out of that, do an arm wrench that slammed Davari down to the mat, and then lock in the rings of Saturn and make Davari tap out. Yeah. And then the gutter rat beat him up with his crutch. Enzo Amore, still ruining things. You look like you want to say something nasty. It's okay. You're amongst friends. I mean, I do. But I, I can't find the words bad enough to describe my feelings. Fair enough. Well, on that note, we'll just say, once again, happy Rusev Day, and thanks for watching. Long live the king of the
cruiser wets. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the links down below. There's a lot of links. Like a podcast. That's the SoundCloud link. And reasonable wrestling fans. That's reasonable. The W. Like, like wrestling. Wets. Comma cruiser. Fair enough. Which uh, number is the king of? Coming up later this week, over on Reasonable Wrestling Fans, you'll be able to see our brand new Battle of the Boxes, Pro Wrestling Great versus Wrestle Great. What? You get to see that. Stay over here. You can check out our No Mercy review. You can talk about where we briefly talk about how much we hate Enzo Amore, uh, as well as the rest of the pay-per-view. And coming up next, we will have the midweek wrap-up with edition one of four of Ultima Lucha Trace. Yeah, and NXT. And of course NXT. We know NXT. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Get out of your system. I'm not going to justify him with, with my words. Just, just enjoy Rusev Day. Mm -hmm. Happy Rusev Day. And a long one.